Um, well, um, in the past, we didn't have machines to mix clay, or we didn't have any machine to control kilns. But these days, we have more advanced technology, so we use such techniques. So it's quite easy, it's much easier for women to be a ceramicist compared to the past. But um, when I make pieces, I never, I'm not so conscious that I am a woman. I just make, just I'm a human being. Not, oh, uh -huh. What about you, Jiha? Are you aware of your gender? Oh, when you're... <laughs> <laughs> well, when I look at my baby, yes, I do. <laughs> well, I used to have long hair, but after a baby is like turned three months old, where I visited Smith College for a film workshop, and at the hotel, I screamed, because my hair was uh, falling off and the, because of the hormone imbalance. And I was like, oh my God, I have to go to workshop and draw and they're gonna see my, my forehead. My, like I was like, really? I mean, I guess the whole like giving birth period totally like changed my, how can I say, studio practice and everything a lot. Wow. <laughs> As a woman, yeah, but yeah, of course I, I, I faced a challenge, but God made me a woman, what can I do? So, <laughs> I mean, I just, I try to like, live in like every day, like, you know, I have to hold it and just let it slide that something is not gonna happen and just, well, like, you know, the previous artists talk about like yelling and fighting into the artists, like, or the couple, as couple, when I heard that, it was like such a similar story because uh, that's what, I, what we are going through right now. <laughs> but, but I think it's really tough but I don't regret like because I think as a woman it's a wonderful experience and um, I don't know it's really difficult being a mother and an artist at the same time yes I'm <laughs> sure and I think that's something that many of the artists here can also um, identify with and can speak to as well um, I'm very interested in um, the kind of subject that you choose for your artwork so for example Hanako you um, many of your artworks are um, lotus flowers. Um, why do you choose this particular subject, as well as Chiha, you, many of your um, subject of your paintings are these fantastical pop art uh, iconography mixed with other uh, traditional, quote unquote, iconography like the peach. So why do you choose the subjects and what do they mean to you? Um, Hagi, where I, I live, is, uh, used to be a swamp land, so it was perfect land for lotus pond. So there were uh, many lotus production, lotus loof, roots were produced. And when I was a um, primary school student, I used to walk to school, and there were uh, lotus ponds on the way. And I saw a real lo lotus flower just bloomed in the morning sun sunshine. It was my first time. And I, at the time, I, I believed that the lotus flower is a flower for the pure land where Buddha lives. But I couldn't tell it was reality or the, the imagination of the pure land. But I, when, at that time, I realized that the pure land exists in this reality, not somewhere else or the place where you, after you die. So I'm, I belong to a Buddhist uh, school, kind of Zen Buddhist uh -huh. Buddhism, called Obak School. Uh -huh. And... Um, Obak is a priest from uh, China. Uh, he came to Japan 17th century, and he believed that uh, pure land is in our mind. So that's why I, I because of the, the first lotus flower I saw when I was a childhood, just always stays in my mind. Oh, that's very interesting. It's going to be very interesting, even worse, 
because uh, when you pick the image, it's uh -huh. just like really exciting. I, I when I saw uh, Miyako's uh, work, it's like lotus because the um, um, the flower I'm painting these days is um, peony. It's kind of opposite. It's my take on. It's not like traditionally or historically any reference. It's my take on. Uh, she was talking about purity. I'm going to talk about impurity. Because <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I look at um, Philip Guston's painting a lot these days and how he's, he, I love his philosophy and as well as like his lifestyle and the way he's so blonde and so, you know, um, how can I say, like just like, like um, ahead of time. Uh -huh. So um, I look at also his, a lot of his work and uh, he says one thing, um, painting is impure. Uh, the impurity is what forces painting's continuity. It's like on my um, thing, like it's it's like written all over my sketchbook. <laughs> so like, so I just think a lotus is such a spiritual flower, and then it just uh, shows a utopian uh, point of view. Um, for me, uh, uh, peony is kind of opposite. It's a big and beautiful blossom and they're like come with uh, white, red, pink and they're celebrating the presence moment. I don't know if the present could be hell or you know heaven but it's sort of like you know opposite of it, it's celebrating and it, even in the lower family and the poor family like they both like decorate their houses with like um, peony flowers in like a custom of Korean tradition. So I really drawn by that like a Coca-Cola you know whether you have million dollars or you have one dollar you get the same Coke. So I, <laughs> so I, so it's, it's the peony is like the big and celebrating and so like beautiful and so uh, how can I say, it's just the, pre the, the presence is I was really drawn and that I was using that, I've been using that as a symbol mm -hmm. and what I do is um, switching the color um, the painting Blue Peony you showed before and there's like Philip Gostung's favorite like a bald figure, like head person, people they were kind of camouflage, it's hard to see but you could kind of find it, like there's eyeballs and then, mm -hmm. and uh, not only that figure, but also they also look like a monk. So also they look like a baby. So there's a lot of the images so dirty, you can kind of name a few. So, and then the peony is like, you know, when I changed, um, when I remove original color and then uh, put uh, totally rear the color, color blue, it's like there are no such blue flowers except you go to grocery store, they dye flower with blue color and purple. It's really strange and unnatural. And um, I really think that's really fascinating because um, another uh, uh, thing that I've noticed and people that uh, like in Asian culture, they like in younger generation, mm -hmm. I don't think my friend would do that, but like younger generation, they dye their hair blonde and they wear like blue contact lens lenses sometimes for fashion reason or they just like, I think there was the strangest thing when I look at them. It's really strange, but I'm not making any judgment or anything. It's my observation. Like, you know, is it beautiful? Is it strange? It's to throw you in a weird place. So that's what I'm trying to do with my work. So I want people to feel familiar at the same time, kind of strange. So that's why I uh, take uh, stuff from the traditional matter and that how people, uh, remember the image and then kind of switch it. So that at least, at least piece like peaches with the rainbow colors and then bamboo like leaves, they're all replaced with different colors. So they feel like they know what the imagery is, but they actually don't know so much. So yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. So I, I, I like peony too. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, we have the sculpture um, made by my ancestor which is a peony tree. So I'd like to show you someday. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah, and also like when I look at your title, one of the titles the same as my painting title, Myo. Oh, uh -huh. oh right. That's why yeah. I was like, oh my God, I almost like wanted to interrupt, but I, I'm <laughs> glad I didn't. <laughs> but Myo, like in Korean, you know, it's the same that has a mis mysterious, like mystery. Also that mystery could be could get a little bit dirty, like sexy. If you use it for two women, myo, myohada means, uh -huh. right? It's like, oh, she's either dirty or sexy. Or like, also the way it sounds, myo is a, um, in Korea, it's like a tomb, tomb. Uh -huh. And so also, myo is like a, myo? 
in yeah, Korea? Yeah, and then myo also uh, another, like the same synonym, same pronunciation, cat. So, and then I actually use one of the Japanese character, inahariko, I'm not sure, it's supposed to be Japanese dog. Like it's a little toy dog that uh, like a lot of gift shop sh sells. I'm sorry, I don't have image, but people, a lot of people in this co country, they look at the, it's uh, come with the botan uh, rice candy. And you see mm -hmm. it, everybody received that as a cat. No one ever even think about that's a dog. Mm -hmm. So it's, I really think it's interesting. It's a cat, no. It's, so like one's misunderstanding on others' like identity. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. But like I said, the Moran, uh, the Pini is just my interpretation. I know it has traditionally good meaning too. I just, I just poke around. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think when I appear, it's not such a good omen, but um, also um, we're going to have to pause now and begin questions because actually Gina, uh, six-month-old daughter, must be picked up from the babysitter at 4.30. So uh, <laughs> you'll understand that. So uh, thank you, and we'd like to open it up for questions for the next like 10 to 15 minutes now. So we'll do the same procedure, uh, if you please wait. And if you just raise your hand and someone with a mic will come and find you. I was wondering what your family thinks of your work and whether they're able to understand it in the terms in which you created it. This, this is a question for Miwa. Um, whenever I make art pieces, I try to show my grandfather or other member of my family, and they really appreciate. But sometimes, uh, because my father is also an artist, I, um, sometimes it's difficult to, um, to have two artists in a, in a very narrow <laughs> space. So I just send my pieces to the gallery directly without showing him. <laughs> This is another question for Miwa as well. Um, I just wondered if you've given it, you know, um, thinking about Maureen's introduction about ha the question of having it all and you know the family and a career and being an artist. And I just wonder if you've given any thought to um, whether or not you'd like to also have a family or? My family? What the... So just, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> just the idea of whether or not you'd like to have children. Can you imagine being able to produce what you produce as an artist and becoming a mother and all of the things that are being juggled by the other panelists? Um, I'm single, so I don't have a chance to have produced children yet. <laughs> but uh, if I had a child, I'd like to make he or she, she to be an artist, I, I will educate him or her to be an artist. But uh, if I had many children, maybe it would be difficult for me to carry on. <laughs> <laughs> 